Lakers. James, we'll start here. Obviously, the, the, the big news is De'Aaron Fox. Yesterday did not go the way I expected at all. I thought they would hide <laughs> De'Aaron De Fox. I thought if we got any news yesterday regarding De'Aaron Fox, it was going to be bad. And I thought anything we needed to know, we'd find out today. Uh, but you guys walked in. You, Hey, James just tweeted De'Aaron's practicing. James just tweeted De'Aaron's shooting. Wait, James has got video. Wait, De'Aaron's talking. <laughs> everything, everything I said and I did not think would happen all happened yesterday. And the number one thing that stood out to me, uh, Hammer, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like he was confident. He spoke in confidence about his finger. He spoke in confidence about playing. He spoke in confidence about everything. Um, and that was that was my biggest takeaway listening to five yesterday. Yeah, I think he he came into the day not knowing what it was going to be like either. And they were able to tape him up. They were able to run him out there for practice yesterday. And, and they did not have a contact practice. So he he did not get hit on the hand. We're going to have to see how he plays. We're going to have to see if the ball slips out of his hand, if if he has trouble launching, if he has trouble playing defense. I mean, these are all concerns, but at the end of the day, he's going to be there. He's he's ready. You know, he, he thinks he can play, and the Kings think he can play, and if he can fight through the pain, he'll he'll play a good 35 to 40 minutes. If it's causing problems, which we've seen in the past with him, I remember, remember when he broke his hand uh, last year, the end of last year, or mm. was it the year before? He broke a it couple of yeah, yeah. He broke a couple of bones in his hand, and the Kings weren't really that forthcoming with it. They kept saying he had a sore hand. Mm -hmm. um, he struggled with turning the ball over. Uh, he struggled with just maintaining possession of the ball. Mm -hmm. I think we're we're going to see very quickly if he's ready to play or not. I think that was the Milwaukee Bucks they were playing. That happened. Mm. I don't know why I remember that. I don't know. I blocked out last year. <laughs> well, last that puke guy. <laughs> puke guy. The puke guy in the, the hug. In the minute, yeah. The puke Minnesota guy in the game. hug. Yeah. yeah. Um, Anthony Slater brought up a good point that I want to get your uh, take on, uh, James. He he felt like everything that happened as far as like Fox coming out, letting people videotape him shooting, being out in the open with shooting, talking about it, getting it out there right away was something of a way to um, like show everybody, show the organization. I'm here. Like you ain't got to worry about nothing. I'm here. Let's go. We're not worried about anything. It was almost a leadership moment of saying, we're not, let's not even worry about that. Let's worry about winning games. Cause I'm here. You don't have to worry about anything. You get the same type of vibe. Yeah. I thought it was interesting because you know, a player when they're injured, they do not have to talk to the media. I mean, they they can talk to the media, but they don't have to talk to the media. There has to be a point where they do have to have a media availability. But he didn't have to have that media availability yesterday. Mm. I thought he just came out and quieted everybody and said, look, I'm I'm playing. I'm good. Like, this is sure. I've got a broken fingertip. It is what it is. Let's move forward and let's see how I play. Um, you know, he'll have painkillers on board. They'll be able to numb some of this. Uh, but he said as long as you know, he can feel with the pad of his finger, then he should be okay. And I, I don't know, I, I, we have to trust him at his word. This is something that like when it does get hit, it's going to hurt, but I don't think it's going to be like some crazy, like he's grabbing his hand every time. Mm -hmm. He's going to get a hit all the time. Mm -hmm. Like he goes up to catch a ball. He's going to stick his left hand up and it's going to hit the hand. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> all it takes is one time for it to hit wrong. He even mentioned it yesterday that, he hadn't really felt it all that much. Mm -hmm. And then he hit his steering wheel the mm -hmm. wrong way. and was like, oh, that doesn't feel good. It's not what he said. We had to dump out of it. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. My bad. That's, that's I, I didn't edit the video. No, that's fine. No, you, and you're not, and you don't have to. Uh, but yes, that is the gist of what he said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something uh, bit me. <laughs> <laughs> De'Aaron was pretty colorful yesterday. He was colorful yesterday. Um, we should mention, man, shout out to our guy, uh, Dr. Lance. What's cracking with Dr. Lance? Injury mm -hmm. report brought to you by uh, Dr. Lance and Kazaza Chiropractic. Uh, here's what you need to know. Uh, Andre Iguodala and Matthew Dellavedova are out. Mm -hmm. uh, De'Aaron Fox still on the latest injury report is listed as questionable. Uh, of course, that's an upgrade because he was listed as doubtful. He's listed as questionable. Of course, uh, no if ands or buts i'm playing 
Uh, that was the line from the Aaron Fox. <laughs> I was listening to uh, Morning Rose, not even today. It was one, Oh, I was listening to today, but they said this another time just randomly. <laughs> Made me laugh. He's like, they really brought back a Godow on scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> guy hadn't played like more than two minutes this year. He just out here. He got that Udonis Haslam. He got deal. it. And that's all right. Like ain't, ain't nothing At wrong with that. Udonis being his, in uniform. Well, Udonis has been averaging <laughs> one point five points per game for eight years, and he yep. keeps getting a contract. I ain't Coach mad at Iggy money, though. Yeah. Keep getting them checks. Yeah. Iggy. Do Keeps what you getting do. them, and we ain't mad at Doctor Lance either because as a chiropractic, hit him up askdoctorlance.com or text him at nine one six seven zero seven zero four. Uh, five six. All eyes on De'Aaron Fox over the last couple of days because of the news regarding the 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 finger. But it, it, has some of that taken pressure off the fact that we've been talking about De'Aaron Fox and 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 and, and his finger and his availability and his confidence and all of that stuff versus hey the fact that the Kings could really use a big game from Devonta Sabonis here in this game, taking a little pressure off of the fact that Kevin Herter is pretty much stunk for four games. Does, does does all of this talk and news around De'Aaron Fox take a little bit of pressure off of those guys over the last couple of days? All right, let's get out there. We know what we have to do. We haven't had to hear about it the last two days, but we know what we have to do. We need to get out there and work. Yeah, I, I totally think it has. I think it's pulled back like what was becoming an issue, especially mm -hmm. with Herter. Um, I don't think Herter was too happy to talk to the media today. I don't know that he was too happy to answer a question from me. Um, like just the way he started his press conference today, that uh, he wasn't having on a Sunday either. <laughs> yeah, like it was, it was pretty short. And you know, like, have I been nice? No, that's not my job to be nice. Like, you know, my whether he reads my six quick thoughts or not, uh, I think one game I put him on a milk carton, and the other one I sent out a search party for him. Hmm. I mean, awesome. but that's that's kind of been where we're at. Right? It's not unfair <laughs> to be, I mean, yeah, just to be just clear. It's not unfair. Well. No, I'm like, it's my job to be honest and, and forthright. And like when somebody is struggling to call it out and say, look, you're, you're struggling. And um, I thought we had some good moments like through his, uh, his media availability today where he started to open up a little bit. And, you know, I, I think they all know like what what's going on. He doesn't like that he hasn't played well. And you can go back and look outside of his first two series uh, in Atlanta. He's really had like three or four pretty rough series in the playoffs. Mm. And it's something that he's got to get through and he's got to fight through and find a way. And then Sabonis too. Uh, Sabonis has taken two free throws in, in the last two games combined. Yeah. Mm. That's not okay. Yeah. And, and he knows that, but there's almost nothing he can do about it because he's playing the same way. He was very clear. Like I'm playing the same way that I always do. He's just not getting any calls. So mm -hmm. uh, tonight's game, you know, you got Tony brothers. Um, not my favorite official, but at least he's usually he calls it straight up. Even if he calls it bad on both sides, he at least is straight up, which uh, is actually fine. If you're going to be bad, be bad on both sides. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of that's the question I posed to to Kevin was it like it's a playoff series and it's f you're four games in you're going into game five. But of the four games, two of them are in Sacramento, two of them are in, in at Chase Center. And not only that, but you're on your fifth refing crew. Like they switch out the, wow. the officiating crew in every game. And so every officiating crew is totally different and they call a game different. And so we started off with what the, the guy that loves to blow the whistle. I can't even remember who it was, but too short. He, he ended up with like 48 <laughs> or, or 50 fouls, foul calls in the first game. Mm -hmm. But then like you have to figure out how each individual officials going to call the game and I, you know i'll relate it a little bit to like you have a four game baseball series uh one of one umpire will call the high strike the next will call the low strike another one will have a wide strike zone like you have no idea what you're going to get but at least there's consistency within the game if you can find it and so hopefully that that's what we get tonight is it consistent you know everyone's straight up and like we can't have Tony Brothers missing the wide open things right in front of him like he did in the Kings Clippers 176, 175, where <laughs> Paul George jumps up in the air and then starts dribbling, which is a clear foul. And he goes like this and he doesn't know what to do. And it's like, just blow your whistle, man. It's mm -hmm. a it's a travel. Mm -hmm. You can't have Tony Brothers just do that. But he also he won't take it from anyone. Like he mm -hmm. he's the guy that like puts his foot down. We'll so see what happens when I'm not I'm not taking it. Yeah. So we'll it should see. be interesting. We'll see what happens with him and Draymond. You know, all these talks about officials. I don't really care about any of them. 
but I just know who's looming at some point. We haven't had him yet. There's only one that I really give a damn about. It's that damn Scott Foster. <laughs> well, Chris Paul ain't here, so it'll be all right. I just I don't like Scott Foster. No Chris Paul jerseys in the arena if Scott Foster's here. I know DeMarcus Cousins. Like, those two didn't get along at all. Like, Not a surprise. Scott Foster threw DeMarcus Cousins out at halftime one game. <laughs> not not a surprise. <laughs> one of did. the least surprising things I've ever heard is Scott Foster Wait, and DeMarcus what? Cousins. Didn't yeah, I think they're playing the Utah Jazz. Cousins went to have a discussion with him at halftime and got tossed. He got a oh, okay. I think technical I remember foul this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and got tossed out of the game at halftime. That's amazing. I don't want to see Scott Foster at all. Well, I think he's on the East Coast serious. right now. Wasn't he in uh, Boston? He's going to show up. You know he is. Damn, bro. Just imagine. Game Scott. seven. Oh, Lord. Game seven. I don't want to see that, man. <laughs> I don't even know whose advantage it will be for. I just don't want to see him in a game. We went, obviously have been talking a lot about Domas and, and, and Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter, I think, is super reliant on how the offense flows. And obviously, he needs to hit shots. Will Z's numbers have shown. Like, he's gotten the looks. He's just not hitting them. The frustrating part about this for, for Kevin Herter, for Kings fans, for the Kings, like, we've seen him have cold streaks before. Like, you kind of just hope he's going to snap out of it. And, and, and I think it was... I don't remember if it was Anthony or I think it was Anthony. I don't remember if it was Anthony or Marcus. One of them pointed out, yeah, no, the, the Warriors wanted to take him away. They wanted to the, 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 the dribble handoff stuff. They wanted to make things as difficult as they can on 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 Kevin Herter. But Domas, Domas is a guy who we feel like he can get involved on his own. The offense kind of has to flow for, for Kevin Herter to really get those looks, get those shots. He's got to get good looks. He's got to make those shots. But Domas, I, I, I'll pose it as a question. Do you think Domas can get himself more involved? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I also think that, like, he's going to get to the line. Like, that's that's part of and, and Or once, he has to get to the line. Yeah, but, like, no, like, it's going to be officiated straight up at some point, especially at home. There's going to be a point where he goes to the line three or four times and Looney or Draymond Green is in foul trouble. He's just too good. And it, what he does, like, to get to the basket... He's so physical and you know, we, in game two, he had what, 24 points. He -hmm. was perfectly fine in game two. It's been the two road games where he literally can't get a call. I mean, you go back to late in, in game four, where the play where Sabonis gets the ball on the break, he turns around and he dumps it to Harrison Barnes, who goes in for the layup, misses a layup. Sabonis jumps in, grabs the ball, goes back up. There's no way he didn't get fouled. And Draymond Green is in his face yelling at him after the fact. Of course, he doesn't get his second technical of the mm-hmm. game. But it looks like Wiggins just hacks him, gets nothing. And they're just looking around like, what in the world? You know what the first thing I thought about that when I saw that play was? Freaking Terrence Davis. Oh, game gosh. one against Portland. Oh, man. When he got teed up for the tip, uh, dunk. The, 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 the tip dunk and he 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 was a little too demonstrative in Dame Lillard's direction, and he got a freaking technical foul because of that. I, I I saw that live. I saw that Draymond Green yeah. play live, and all I could think about, you need to give Terrence his money back. <laughs> Seriously, they need to give Terrence his money back, and I want that game back. <laughs> I, like I'm I'm wondering, like I've watched his series, and and I'm wondering if Jordan Poole, his real name isn't his last name isn't Poole, and that's just what they call him because he falls down on the floor all the time and makes <clears throat> wet spots everywhere. Because I, I'm watching guys slip and fall on Jordan Poole's like chalk outline on the floor <laughs> the entire game because the dude is flopping and on the ground the whole night. Mm. I'm, I'm just like, I'm watching and I'm like, you gave him a hundred and what? That's the whole time I'm sitting there like, man, he sure does make Malik Monk's contract look better and better and better every time we see the two play. I like Jordan And does, does Poole. Does Jordan do Poole have some good games? Sure, he can catch fire, but that dude's on the deck all day long. Like, even when he makes a shot, he's flopping on the ground. I, I'm just like, okay, that's what we're doing. Would you guys you, think I'm crazy? You, I'm just watching the guys, the the ball boy guys out there scrubbing. The hardest the, working guys in the <laughs> they between are. between pool and Domas because Domas is on the ground a lot too. Yeah. Between those two, yeah. Uh, that's uh, the hardest working group in the in, in the I, arena. All I can think about is James said chalk outline, and I just keep thinking of coming to America. Yeah, 
to the apartment. Nip, yeah, when they tried to cut. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dog too. The oh, they got the dog too. <laughs> Damn shame what happened to that dog. Oh. <laughs> but let's yeah. stay upright tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, and I think you agree. Jordan Poole is a, is a problem. He is a problem. He is a guy that if you let him get going, like he can put up 30 in a game, you know, and I think the Kings for the most part have done a really good job of um, curtailing him in this series. I think this is a game that you got to, you got to look out for him for. You got to make sure that you're ready to defend him and not let him get any confidence. And I don't know whose responsibility that's going to be because Davion is going to be on Steph a lot of the times that they're out there at the same time. But um, I would, I'd, I'd be checked into to Jordan Poole. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem the Kings have is that if Fox can't go full fle- uh, full force, then it's got to be Davion shifting over and defending Steph. And then that's going to leave Jordan Poole to do his thing. Like Jordan Poole can score. I'm not saying he can't score. But, um, you know, the Kings have usually an ability to slow that down. I thought coming into this series that the Davion Mitchell-Jordan Poole matchup would be great for the Kings. He just he likes to dribble too much. And and Davion Mitchell's really good against that type of guard. But the fact that you have to use Davion so much on on Steph has changed sort of the direction of the series. And I, I kind of wonder, like, will we see if Fox is fine, mm-hmm. truly, if we see more of the game one where Fox chases him for 48 minutes as opposed to switching over and having uh having Davion do it mm-hmm. because I think that's what's opened up Jordan Clarkson to have, you know, a solid game. Jordan Poole. Uh, Jordan yeah, Poole. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Jordan Poole to have a solid game four. Could that be dependent on Kevin Herter? I guess, but again, Kevin Herter is a big guard. He's six, seven, you know, like he matches up physically with, with a guy like Clay Thompson. You know, he does not match up so well with, with guys like Steph or or Jordan but do you do you think M- Mike Brown would be more comfortable putting him out there if like okay Kevin Herter is not playing well we could put Davion and De'Aaron out there together De'Aaron could do whatever Davion could be on Steph yeah yeah no I mean that's big though I mean and you need the, yeah, to play I, major minutes mm-hmm. yeah so and I, I also think one of the biggest things the development in this series is that Gary Payton got sick and missed a game. Mm-hmm. As soon as you pulled him out of the lineup, it was like the Warriors will realize what like we were talking about before. They got too many non-scorers on the court. Mm. Like you're able to defend, you know, like a guy like that, like a guy like Gary Payton with Alex Len. Hmm. That's not a good thing for the Warriors. Like mm. if they can, it, they started putting more scores on the court, and you took Kaminga off the court, who's struggling all over there, all over the place. But you put Moody out there, who's hit his threes. Right. Again, you put an offensive player out there and it's opened things up. And Moody can play some B as well, but they don't have they or they didn't have enough scores on the court that were in the rotation early in the series, which is why I think the Kings were able to jump all over them early and get the 2-0 lead. Now we're seeing sort of a, a, a little bit of a transition to something different. You know, when we see the the lineups where Pool is starting mm-hmm. two games in a row here, that's a really tough lineup to to defend mm-hmm. because obviously you don't have to defend looney as a scorer but you got four other guys right and so yeah i think it's interesting like this is a really really solid game of chess going back to sabonis a little bit what do you think and to your question as well damien just piggybacking off of that what do you think they can do to get sabonis going offensively i talked about how I, I know a lot of people want him to take that mid-range shot and he doesn't look comfortable doing it, so don't do it. Go L- Looney is standing in the restricted area. If You don't have to barrel into him with your, with your shoulder and hit him in the chest. He's not going to move. Hit him on your hip, four feet away from the basket, take a dribble, make a move, go over the top of him. But it seems like he's reluctant to do that a lot of the times. Do you think they need to have more... Do they need to say, Domas, look, I know you're trying to run the offense, but just to keep these guys honest, you've got to score a little bit more, be more aggressive with the shot attempts that you take. Realistically, he has to hit them. Like if he hit one or two, 
you see them start to change their defense. The So you mean the mid range? Yeah, the mid range. And like he doesn't need to step out and shoot the three ball, but there has to be a counter and the Kings have to figure out what that counter is. And, you know, that's kind of where Chris Weber lived when they ran the, the Princeton or the double high post. Um, he lived in that range. He just sat there and shot those shots all day long. And as soon as you, you came up on him, then he'd take you off the dribble and go to the basket. I think there's going to be a point where you do that with Domas, like where he, he does have to shoot. And there's three games, uh, two days off be between games. Like Domas is working on the jump shot to make sure he's ready for these moments. Mm. It's just something that he's not, he hasn't been asked to do most of the season because they haven't had to. You know, typically a mid range jump shot is the worst shot in basketball. I mean, it, it doesn't matter how you turn it, a mid range jump shot is usually in the NBA, it's around 40%. So it's worth 0.8 points per possession, where a corner three at 40% is worth 1.2 because it's three-point shot. So if someone's taking a mid-range jumper every time at 40% and hitting it 40%, and someone else is shooting its same shot but from three, mm -hmm. now you're losing 0.4 points per possession. By 10 possessions, you're down plenty. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why you don't see a lot of mid-range jump shots. And then you have De'Aaron De Aaron Fox, who's one of the best mid-range jump shooters in the game. So you don't want to just live in the mid-range to become the San Antonio Spurs. You want to get to the basket. You want to shoot three-point shots. That's sort of the design of their off offense. And then you let De'Aaron Fox like freelance. And no one else is really allowed to freelance outside of him and maybe Monk a little bit. Everyone else has basically got to run the offense the way it's supposed to be run. Are you of the belief the winner of tonight's game is going to win the series? I don't know. Yeah, I, well, I'd say if the Warriors win tonight, the Warriors will win the series. If the Kings win tonight, I'm still not. I'm I'm still not sure. And I I don't want to like disparage the local team, but like if you're gonna go into Game Six up three one, and you got to go down to Chase and win, it's still not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. And then you go into a Game Seven. If you lose that, you go into a Game Seven. I don't know that I love the Kings in seven. So they haven't been there before. They they aren't the experienced team. Game sevens usually are just so much hype, so much chaos. Mm -hmm. And maybe it is the Kings that come out and punch first and are the physical team. I think that's the biggest thing. Whoever is the most physical team is going to win. And we've seen it time and time again. And then the one game that was like a coin flip, both teams were so physical in game four. It was crazy. I argue two games were a coin flip. Like we shouldn't forget that the first game did come down to like Steph Curry had the ball in his hands with two seconds left with a chance to tie. Yeah. Like that was, that was every bit the game that game four was game two was pretty close too. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it was Kings, uh, you know, pulled, g g g g we got to light the beam chant with, with I think less <laughs> yeah. than 60 seconds yeah. left uh, in that one. Um, um, real, real quick though, about um, this, this game five situation. Do you, do you look at, how the king like is this where the experience and all this other stuff catches up with them because i don't feel like it has so far i think they've been perfectly fine in these playoffs and everybody's talking about experience do you think a game five a two two game five on your home court knowing that if you lose you got to go to san francisco to to keep your season alive do you think maybe this is the spot where experience becomes an issue because i'll just i'm asking the question because i don't think it is i don't think this team I don't think you're going to see it. Like, I think they're fine. They're, I think they're fine. I don't think experience is an issue. But what do you think? I think experience has been part of every single game. But whether it's the deciding factor or not is, is really what it comes down to. Like, game four. Like, an experienced team doesn't run into triple coverage at the rim like five times in the fourth quarter and throw the ball up and expect to get a foul call. In that situation, you have to understand that you're literally playing the champs. And if you if you don't play good basketball in that situation, the ref is not going to bail you out. And that's something that Mike talked about yesterday. He's like, we have to understand that like we aren't going to be handed this series by the officials. We have to go out and take, take it. Mm -hmm. So when you go up for a layup late in the game, you have to understand that you better you better dunk it or you better know exactly what you're doing. This whole running in there and expecting someone to bail you out 
And that's where I think inexperience in game four came in. Like they turned the ball over. They kept running at the guys at, at the basket. And, you know, even to a certain extent, like look at the way that Sabonis has been officiated. Like this is the experience that he needs to gain. How do I get to the free throw line? Mm -hmm. And even Harrison Barnes, like Harrison Barnes has to look at this situation and say, we can't get Domas to the free throw line. They're not calling that, but they're calling everything else on the perimeter. How do I go get to the free throw line? Because he's spectacular at drawing fouls, at doing his Euro step, going into slow motion in the key. He has to take some of that pressure off of Domas as well. You can't have a game where one team is shooting 25 free throws and another shoot, is shooting 13 or 14. Hmm. That's not the way it's going to go. And if you're playing at this time of pace, you need free throws because that hmm. slows down and lets you take a breath. And this team hasn't figured that out. So I, like, I get what you're saying about experience. But I think we we just keep looking at experiences like this mystical thing mm -hmm. and not realizing that it comes into play in so many different aspects of the game. It's, you know, like how many times has Steph Curry stepped in and hit a shot, a game-winning shot in a huge, huge playoff game and just laced a three-pointer? Well, I mean, Harrison Barnes hasn't been to the playoffs in seven years. He stepped into the shot, missed it. He also had a, a shot right before that, the three-point shot that he took, with 18 seconds on the shot clock, which was just horrible. Mm. And then he missed the layup. Like, so these are moments where like the experienced team like went to what they do well and came out on top, mm. in my opinion. And and to your point as well, James, um, experience is a factor. It doesn't have to be the factor. No, of course. Right? You know what yeah. I mean? Like uh the, the there's there's things that these Kings players, the Air Fox and uh, Malik Monk, because they've been uh, never been in the playoffs, they've never experienced before, so they are inexperienced. Like they, this is the first time. But their skill set or their approach to the game allows them to stay locked in on what they have to do and overcome the inexperienced situation. And I think that's kind of what you were just talking about. Like it's it's always going to be a factor because you know they're going through a lot of stuff for the first time but it doesn't have to be the the detriment of your season or your, or your game or anything like that well that and i think everyone deals with experience issues or you know they deal with it differently mm -hmm. so some guys like De'Aaron fox is like okay this is fine this is who i am i'm fine in this spotlight and other guys are like okay I, i'm not or other guys take three games of being really bad and they go oh Okay, I got it now. And Keegan Murray goes off for 23 points. Hmm. So, like, each of these games, it's just really almost like a trigger point. Like, when does somebody get it? Hmm. And when do they don't? And when, when do they struggle? And, like, you don't know when these things are going to pop up. But that's why, like, 817 playoff games coming into the series for the Warriors, they've seen everything. And the Kings haven't. And so it's individually, it's as a team, it's, it's like a lot more complicated than just like one team is more experienced than the other. Mm -hmm. real, real quick. I just want to say, point out something, um, give or take a player or something like that. Probably the three best players in the series for the Kings, Fox, Monk, Davion. First three players. of the worst, Herder, Barnes, Sabonis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the ones yeah, with the playoff, playoff experience, experience yeah. and played the worst. And Barnes is that's where I say Barnes and Davion. Maybe you could switch them. Maybe you could put Barnes on the good side. I don't think he's been terrible, but you know, he struggled. Barnes would have been four. perfectly fine finishing Sunday's game with 12 points. Man, man. <laughs> would have been perfectly okay. <laughs> Not the best game from Harrison. He finished with 12 points. That's all that matters. Yeah. That he finished with nine. I think he got in the in that moment, he kept thinking, I gotta beat these guys. Mm. This is so? it. This is the moment I gotta beat these guys. Mm. And because he never takes shots out of character. And and for that matter, I don't remember another game where he's taken. Was like, that shot out of character, though? The final shot? No. Uh, oh. The the previous oh. three was out yeah, of yeah, character. That one, yeah, yeah. That one was wild. yeah, it yeah. was one where uh, Fox lost the handle yep. and it should have been a foul call. That's with 37 seconds left. And that was in the two-minute report, right? That was in that the two-minute report. Draymond and Green play. that should have put Fox at the line yeah, because they were in the penalty. Yeah. yeah, so that play, though, like – why are you hoisting a shot with that much time? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a good look. You know, it was uh, like a Dorsberg call, a sidestep three from like 27 feet with 18 seconds on the clock. Mm -hmm. Like that was a moment where like you would, Harrison Barnes typically, the light bulb would have went on. He would have done like a mature play mm -hmm. and he didn't. And I'm not like, 
it's the heat of the moment. It mm -hmm. happens. So I'm not trying to call out Harrison Barnes, just explaining in, in those moments, like, again, we think, oh, he's had, he's been all the way and won a championship. Mm -hmm. He won a championship. He's 23. He's 30 now. <laughs> I think he's 22. With kids. Mary with a kid. Yeah. yeah. Like his yeah. life is totally different. He's... Draymond didn't get invited to his wedding. He didn't no, get invited to the christening not. either. Yeah. He didn't get invited. Did you see Richard one. Jefferson respond to? I did. No, that's that fantastic. I, I also got invited to the wedding. <laughs> that's tremendous. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Um, so whether this game, whether this series, excuse me, goes to Friday or Sunday, it's every other day now for the, for, for the second time in the series. Yeah. Second time in the series. Does that benefit one team over the other in your mind? Yeah, it does. It benefits Sacramento, right? It does. Yeah. It, it benefits Sacramento because, man, the Warriors did not think that they were going to have mm -hmm. to run Steph out there for 43 minutes. It really benefits Sacramento if you win tonight. A little less so if you lose, <laughs> but it really <laughs> benefits them if you win tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're putting pressure on them and you're pushing the tempo and mm -hmm. doing what the Kings are trying to do, it does. it does benefit you. Game three is the only game I felt like they didn't do that. I thought game three was slow. Mm -hmm. It's the only game I felt like they yeah. didn't. The mo didn't more push. physical team came out and showed them. I, I think the Kings have been the more physical team in two. I think game four was a toss up on physicality. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was brilliant. Both teams just like really throwing haymakers at each other. And and somebody missed a shot at the end of the game. A couple of turnovers. Like it probably shouldn't have been a three point game or a two point game or even mm -hmm. a one point game with 30 with a couple of seconds left. It should have been more like a six point Kings lead. They just made a bunch of mistakes on the stretch. Um, uh, talking to Bonte about that as well. Bonte Hill, 95, seven, the game, he, he felt like the Warriors were, their tank was running on E at the end of that game. And that goes to what Damien just brought up with, you know, the every other day and, you know, these games being intense, the Kings pace, Steph having to play 40 minutes a night. Um, it could be a situation where, you know, the, these guys, the, the Warriors run out of gas or give everything they have to try and get through this series. And they may get through it or they may not. But, I mean, they, they may not have anything left in the tank afterwards. Yeah, like I, I'm looking at the chat here and, like, we got – a guy just keeps saying that we're acting like Steph is out of shape. We're not acting like Steph is out of shape. We're being honest and saying Steph is 35 years old. Like that's what this is. And we're being honest saying Steph is a human being. Yeah. He's and, not and a the, robot. The Warriors had no intention of running out here for 40 minutes a night. And, and they've had to without any question, if they're going to win the series, Steph has to play 40 plus mm -hmm. that's the way it's turned out. Mm -hmm. And the Kings have put that much pressure on the Warriors. Now, I don't know if that's going to wear them out and they're not going to be the same in round two. Maybe. But I think in round three, you're going to start seeing the effects of the what they've put their bodies through. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, again, the Warriors have been in this position so many times. They know how to get through a, a playoff series, get to the next round, save your bodies. They're not being able to do, to, to do that right now. They're having to, like... Throw so all caution to the wind because they are in a they're in a fight, and they got to figure out how to how to beat the Kings. Probably only people who cover this series in the country who haven't spent an hour on the non Steph minutes. Oh, it's so, bad. I did say that oh, was one bad. of my keys, though. Yeah, I said that before Game One. Wasn't it? You like, said that during the regular season. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> I think uh, during during the first three games. They were like a plus 37 with him on the court yeah. and a negative 35 with him it off was a, the court. It was a pretty stunning number. And we're talking about like a 36 to 12 split. Mm -hmm. So they're a negative 30 something in like 12 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's not great. And they and that in, also includes, I thought they sur they did a good job of surviving it in game three. So that probably helped those, those numbers out a little bit. It needs to be negative 40. Like ne <laughs> negative 32 is not enough. Negative 36 needs to be negative 40, negative 42, negative 44. It needs to, it need, it needs to be worse. We've got to be better when Steph is off the floor. Uh, no, it doesn't matter if you're good. You need to be better, even better when Steph is on the floor, uh, off the floor. We'll come back. Uh, we'll talk more about this critical game five, or as they say, pivotal game five mm. between the Sacramento Kings and the Golden State Warriors tonight at the Golden One Center when we return with our 1320 Kings insider James Ham here on D-Lo and KC brought to you by Sky River Casino and Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320.
this saw when Sabonis got this charge call on Draymond Green. Let me put that shoulder right in his chest. One time. Yeah. Well, this is what today's going to be about. Get ready. Yeah, like I, I would never disparage Steph Curry. I think he's one of the most brilliant players we've ever yeah. seen. And the fact that they're having to run him out there for 40 plus minutes. Like, Which they've admitted, we don't want to do this. Well, no, I mean, this is, he's not Benjamin Button. Don't want I mean, that. the dude's getting older. Like it, it happens. And he still hits ridiculous shots. Yeah. Just ridiculous. We did not talk about the, uh, the NBA has ratified the, the yeah, new I CBA. Saw that. Yeah. That's tremendous. We can talk about that when you get back. Labor. Line. Uh, yeah, wow, through 2930. I think that's going to be the uh, the lasting legacy of Adam Silver is his ability to labor peace, keep labor peace and to allow the the league to continue to grow where every other sport, even his own sport under David uh, uh, yeah David mm -hmm. Stern like failed miserably. Like all of these these shortened seasons and stuff, that was bad for the game. I mean, baseball killed them, killed their game by missing a World Series. And like Adam, Adam Sneaky got a lot of legacy moments. Like you talk about the labor piece, that's good. I mean, Donald Sterling would probably be at the top. Mm. Um, and he navigated COVID for two years. Mm. Yeah, he you know there was NBA basketball for two years during you know two two a season got completed after being stopped for god what was it four months yeah five months whatever it was uh and then another one started almost right away and they were able to establish protocols they mm -hmm. were able to develop yeah. the bubble concept i mean all of these things are are really i mean crazy what they've been able to do per perhaps the biggest impact in all of that was the nba was the first to shut down and everyone followed Yes. Literally everyone followed. Big East took a few minutes, but they eventually followed and shut their Big little East tournament out there down. Playing their game. What are you doing? Didn't they quit at halftime? Like, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. I'd even <laughs> like I, I've said this, like how many lives did did Rudy Gobert save? Well, like, let's look at it differently. I mean, I, really, like it was dumb and it, you know, all that stuff, and, but it's hard to not it think about shut everything down. It's hard to not so think about quick. the golden one center that night. Oh, it's wild. It was packed down here. And at the at the I don't know if we were at the height of that thing, but we were certainly approaching it. No, oh, that was the beginning. But my lasting memory is having to do a live hit on the in the middle of the floor at Golden One Center, standing next to Katie Christensen in high hills. Like, can someone give me a box? I'm gonna need a box. <laughs> can we get you? James a stool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's tremendous. Katie and Mark on the call tonight. Anybody wants to watch that? Shout out to my people. Who's calling? Is it Brian and Yeah, SVG? it is Brian. Brian and JJ or J JJ. Jim Jackson. Oh, okay. It's not Stan. It might be Stan. It might don't give me I'm, I'm thinking of uh Jim Jackson, but it could be Stan. Yeah. Tyler brings up Coe's. I think that yeah, yeah, Tyler Jennings. Um Coe's always stood on boxes. And then I had to stand on like a two inch box standing next to Doug so we wouldn't have this huge height disparity between all of us. Um and then one day I, I stacked all of the boxes in Cosmore spot, which was hilarious. So he <laughs> goes to go on the air and there's like a stack like three feet tall. Mm -hmm. So he stood on top of the boxes and like took pictures like with Doug right next to him. Oh, that's it, tremendous. Was, it was hilarious. It's a shame what happened to him. Uh, yeah. This Anthony Edwards thing is. Yeah, that's ridiculous. all that John 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 sent us. That I. That's ridiculous. I didn't see what happened. I well, I he had a chair in his hand for some reason, and yeah, he. I think he was running back, and the chair was probably in the way. He grabbed it and. He kind of flung it and it hit someone. And now there's threats of the Denver police. legal. There's 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 threats of 
law enforcement get Denver involved. PD is considering pressing charges. It's pretty ridiculous. Shocking that a police department won't want to find better things to do with their time. Mm. But hmm. And he called you a fraud. Tyler, I, I like I know what that story is, but he didn't call me that. No, well, that guy. Yeah. Appreciate you for being with us wherever you are. Game five tonight at the Golden One Center. Our 1320 Kings insider and creator of the Kings Beat, James Ham, here with us. If you're not a subscriber on the kingsbeat.com yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. You're missing out on some great, great content. Um, James Wright's content centered on the Kings, but also has a lot of NBA stuff there. We just got word that the CBA was ratified. Uh, so that's done there will be no labor issues with the nba and and uh, the nba players association to see. which shouldn't be surprising no. um draymond green is furious probably because he still hasn't read it but he's he's angry <laughs> some he's angry about it he, he, he's not quite sure what's going on uh, he's, he's really upset about these uh ultra taxpayers uh not being able to sign dante DiVincenzo. It's clearly unfair That's for Christmas all Christmas. of these teams to be to be put up on a pedestal when a team like ourselves, if you know what basketball is all about. You know that sounds like Chris Broussard. Chris Broussard's a little bit okay, more now I like hear the difference. Right. All right, <laughs> I hear the difference. I hear the difference. You're right. But when you know what basketball is yep. all about, I got you. you know that this is completely unfair mm -hmm. to the Warriors and what they're trying to do. We did this ourselves. Even if Harrison Barnes didn't invite me to his wedding, I don't care. I wasn't going to go anyway, but it just is what it is if you know the game of basketball. Hey, I'll ask you a league. Thank you, Draymond. I'll ask you a, a, a league question before we get back to the game tonight. We saw, you know, we saw the Clippers, you know, bust their ass as much as they could last night to, to, to compete with the Phoenix Suns, but that series is over. We've also learned that Kawhi Leonard tore has a torn meniscus. Mm. What does that tell you about load management, if anything? It's tough because I want to take Kawhi and put him way on the outside of any bubble. Like, like he doesn't fit into like the Venn diagram. Like, right? Like, I'm not going to use him as an example. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do think that load management is bad for the league. I think but isn't he a players. prime? Ex isn't he the poster child of load management? I would like to tell you that he's a poster child for load management. But even going back to the San Antonio thing, where they could never find an injury in his in his quad, um, like there are players that do load management that you know, I, I don't know. Like for me, Kawhi is such an outlier with the injuries, and then he goes out and he. He starts having like, you know, what he towards ACL. And now we're talking about meniscus. Like, I, I just don't think he's ever going to be the same. I think that he basically says, I'm only playing 50 games a year. But then on top of that, the injuries to, and all the stuff with him are very strange. I think there are a lot of other players in the league that do load management, a lot of teams that do load management. And I don't think it helps anybody. Um, I, I don't think it's, you know, your a body in motion stays in motion, you know, that whole thing. And, and I think that a lot of teams are doing a disservice to themselves and their players by by doing these things. Now, I, I will tell you, like I, I have conversations every single night with some of the Kings, uh, like training staff behind the scenes, and the things that they do, where they're measuring the guys' acceleration, deceleration, uh, leaping off of pads uh, when they go out to shoot, and then when they come back in after warming up and and getting their pregame shots up. They are tracking every single day the players' like ability to recover their again their acceleration their deceleration, um, and, and so they're tracking this stuff. It's not an exact science, but they are seeing like okay, we practice way too hard on a Thursday night. We better not do anything on a Wednesday because we got a game on Thursday, hmm. and they're seeing it, and they're saying okay, we got to pull back or. We've run De'Aaron Fox into the ground. We need him to take a day off. 
and whether that's a practice day or it's a game, you know, there's a reason why they're seeing stuff in their data that says, Hey, look, we're trying to avoid injury here. Let's pull back a little bit. And that's what they've been doing all year. And that's what they've been doing for a long time. They've been tracking this data, but it is no exact science. I, I will just tell you the healthiest team in the league practice more than any team in the league. Everyone played as much as possible. They fought through injuries. That's the Sacramento Kings. And that's so I'm all for protecting the players. And if our guy, Pete Youngman, is listening to this, he's going to throw something at the radio and maybe DM me or something. But all this information, I know you just said it's not an exact science, but what proof do we have that it works? And what is it working for? Like, what are we, what's the ultimate goal? Do you want these guys to play? five years more on their career is that the goal or is it to maybe get them it's to play to... at an optimum level but they're like the stuff james was talking about not not necessarily the Kawhi leonard stuff and mm -hmm. playing every you know i think we even looked at Giannis, which wasn't as but wasn't Giannis like off every like six game yeah and mm -hmm. and someone uh who was it that never played back-to-backs all season long uh anthony davis probably i think yeah. he was ad yeah yeah I mean, but 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 look so to that point they coddled him and did whatever. I mean, I know he was dealing with injuries, but he never played back to back. He's hurt as we speak. Only had like nine points the other night. De'Aaron Fox didn't. Is he not playing at optimal level right now? You know, before this was broken finger. So like what I, I know there's no exact signs, but like what are, what are we trying to do as opposed to like what's actually happening? Yeah, I mean, I think it it might go to something more like, okay, so there's a stat like once a NFL running back rushes like 400 carries three seasons in a row, you might as well just like, like they're done. They're completely shot, right? Mm -hmm. So there, there's a, we're able to like kind of track what hits and stuff like that can have. But I'd also say that some of these teams, and, and this is where I think it, it's really hard to like bag on some of these guys who take some of the time off they don't just play 82 games. They play an entire playoff series after that. So I remember looking at one point at Kobe Bryant versus, um, versus Kevin Martin at the same exact age. And Kobe had played something like 500 games more than Kevin Martin, mm -hmm. whether, and that wasn't even considering like team USA mm -hmm. and all the other things that they, that he plays. So at the same age, their body had been through so much more. And we can say it's just basketball, but there has to be a certain amount of jumps in somebody like mm -hmm. that. That And, you know, Vince Carter somehow stole a bunch from someone else. <laughs> so there's like outliers for sure. But we we've seen players get to a certain point. It's why Major League Baseball had such an issue in, in the early 2000s, because it was like, hey, you hit 32, 33. Your, your numbers historically had dropped off considerably. And then all of a sudden we have Rafael Palmero and Barry Bonds and Roger Clements finding a whole new career after, after he was shot. A whole new four Cy Youngs, mm -hmm. right? Something was wrong. Something had changed and ended up that they were dirty. That's, that's what it comes down to is like they had bought six or eight years on their career by cheating. And that it is what it is. Like you can look at the numbers historically where a player gets to a certain age and then every once in a while there's an outlier of a guy who can go till 40, but even at 40, his numbers have diminished considerably over, you know, 37, 38, 39. And all of a sudden that's not what was happening. Uh, how old was Barry Bonds when he hit 73 home runs? Like 36? Something like that. Yeah. For a guy who in his prime hit 33. And you're like, what is going on here? And so that's load why management. I, yeah, that's load management. Yeah, load management. Load management got married to 73. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think there's <laughs> there's a lot of uh, like debate on, you know, what it takes to to keep a team in full strength and all that stuff. But there, the science doesn't back anything up yet. There's not enough data. Mm -hmm. We can even talk about the Kings this season. 82 games with one team is not enough to prove anything because next season, Someone could go down in game two and be out for six weeks, and all of a sudden the Kings numbers look totally different. Someone else can go down in game 12, and they're out for three weeks, four weeks, and all of a sudden the Kings have as many games missed as anyone else, and it can be a freak injury. It can be the finger thing. It can be the fact that your big man decided to play through a broken thumb mm -hmm. for 50-plus games. Yeah. Keegan Murray, 
He played through a broke is something in his hand, which the Kings have never told us what it was. It's crazy. He played through it for well over a month. I think it was more like six weeks. And then he finally said, yeah, I finally got cleared to not wear the, the, the thing anymore. We're like, you got yeah, cleared. What yeah, does that mean? Yeah, because, bro. What happened? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Every day they just tape up my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Came in, taped up. I feel bad for Kawhi. He get he get, I do like he gets ridiculed for this stuff. I honestly think you, you you talked about the no injury in San Antonio. I I think Kawhi was hurt in San Antonio. He was trying to express that something was wrong, and the medical staff they weren't listening to him. They're like, I know you say it's fine. It's not fine. Something is wrong. I'm telling you, it's my thigh. It's my leg. I'm telling you something is wrong. And then Pop and I I, I think it was Tony Parker. All these people started popping off to the media, and it was like, to hell with you. I want out of here. Mm-hmm. And I know when he went to Toronto, the thing with Toronto and the thing with Los Angeles was I need to be able to make sure my body is OK. Mm-hmm. And I need you to listen to me if I tell you something is wrong. And that kind of started this whole thing. I don't know how we got to the point where we got this year. Of course, he was coming off of an injury, which I'm sure played a part. Uh, but the fact that he was coming off of an injury, load managed to a, a great degree at the start of the season and still got hurt in the playoffs. Uh, one, it leaves me feeling terrible for Kawhi Leonard. It makes me feel bad for NBA fans because he is such a special, special talent, as we saw in this series. Uh, and it leaves me concerned that you know his his better days are behind him. Well, yeah, he mean, was a top three player in the league four years ago. Look at Grant Hill. There was nothing yeah. Grant Hill could do to stay healthy. I mean, he yeah. just kept having ankle injuries and ankle inj- like one after another. Thank God then- Stephen A. wasn't around to tell him to retire. Mm, yeah. Tell me he's the worst. Uh, worst superstar, superstar ever. Of all time. But I'll tell you too, like I, I remember a couple of years ago with Carl Anthony Towns. Like they went in, they did everything on his knee. They checked it multiple times and they kept saying, there's nothing in there. There's nothing wrong at all. And he kept sitting and sitting and sitting. And finally, they're just like, oh, we don't know what to tell you because there's nothing wrong. Hmm. And then eventually he decided to play a little bit more, but not much. And they were just like, look, th- that's some players. Some players like uh, Marvin Bagley has had plenty of injuries that are legit. He also never had a structural injury when he was in Sacramento, like a true structural hmm. injury outside of the broken thumb. Hmm. Right. So like the foot issue, the other foot issue, like all of these things kept happening. But like sometimes it is about like intestinal fortitude. Can you go play? Are you hurt or are you injured? And a lot of players have been raised to to believe that they're they're always injured. They're not just hurt. Hmm. And like so it doesn't it's not nice. But like I with my son, it was always like, are you hurt or are you injured? If you're hurt. You can keep playing. If you're injured, I will take you to the emergency room. We'll go check it out. Which one are you right now? Oh, I'm fully injured. <laughs> what, which <laughs> no, one? No. Yeah. Which one? Oh, believe me, I know. Uh, yeah. Which one? Which one? Do you, what do you think, De'Aaron is? Oh, I, I think. I mean, I this is a injured. legitimate. He's injured. And he he's injured it's injured, a right? legitimate injury. Yeah, if he if he decided to say no, I'm done. No one would have questioned right, it the right. rest of the season. Yeah. I mean, he's probably going to have to have off-season surgery on that finger. Yeah, I think so, he's injured and in playing through it. Yeah, yeah, like, and and sometimes that's the way it goes. Like, you, like I've been injured plenty of times and said, okay, we don't have enough players. I'm going to go play. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. I like, but that's also a, it's an old school mentality. It's a mentality of a generation, two generations before of what we're seeing on the basketball court from these guys. So bonus. I think a lot of guys still have that mentality, though. Obviously, De'Aaron yeah. and Domas being. So bonus is do. fully old school. I mean, that's that's old school. Oh, well, yeah. Thanks, know? Dad. I'm sure that plays a major factor. <laughs> so, yeah. Go home and have. Yeah, yeah, Dad, I'm load management tonight. I want to know how that conversation goes. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What Film I, that for 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 the run. That's what I want to see. <laughs> what I think this all comes down to when you talk about load management, and I think different sports, but it's the same uh, same thought process. Is you talk about a running back load management to me is they're trying to take as long as possible to get to four hundred carries. Hmm. That's what it comes down to. I don't think it necessarily. I don't want to say that. I want to say it doesn't help you because it could help you. But I don't – like, you can load management all year and get hurt in the playoffs. You oh, can yeah. You can play all year, 
and not get hurt in the playoffs, right? But when you talk about a whole career and, you know, amount of jumps that somebody has in their body and what they, you know, what they have, they're trying to, to use the football term, they're trying to take as long as possible to get to 400 carries. Yeah, and I mean, like really, sometimes kids, uh, I mean, you have kids, I have kids. Some kids are tougher than other kids. You know, I've told you guys this, that I had a, a guy I played football with in high school, Chris Daly, an amazing running back. He broke his collarbone in a game and then showed up at practice on like two days later expecting to practice with his collarbone like an inch above one side, the end, mm. an inch above the other. Uh, Where he, were that young man's parents? <laughs> well, uh, it's very possible they're just hardworking people are like, well, what you're going to do is what you're going to do. Like I, it's same exact guy got his arm pinched between two helmets and had a chunk of flesh taken out of his forearm in a game. It's bleeding everywhere. They tape him up. He goes back. Here's the crazy part of the story. That he, wasn't it. He yeah, shows up to that practice. Here's the crazy part. He shows up to practice on Monday. He sewed that thing up himself. See, you can see the injury conversations your, with James. So, your, I don't your know. stories are I, terrible. I well, what They're I'm saying, so like, gross. You got that, but then you have other guys who like, oh man, I think I pulled something. I'm out for three weeks. Well, That's not him. In this particular case, I'm, I'm other guys. No, I, I'm not sewing my own flesh. Tell us, to my body. tell us more about what direction your wife's finger was pointing when she cleaned up. Finger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what, but like some people oh, are just like, man. Hey, look, I'm a gamer. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to play. You know, I think we've all played on, on an injury that we should not have played on. Mm -hmm. I'm paying for many, many times where I, I did stuff I should not have been doing uh, because I just kept playing through and it is what it is. Well, we're playing through tonight with game five. What it like? I, I, you're a broadcast journalist and you report, but what's your gut tell you about this game? You're, you've been around the team the last couple of days. You, you've got a feel for them and their, their, their confidence level. And I think they're ready. I think there was such a weird feel after Sunday's loss mm -hmm. where so many people are like, oh, lost the opportunity. It's over. Like I felt that from a lot of people around the team, not like the the team itself. A lot of media members, a lot of you know fans were like on social media. I don't get it. Like this team, it, it they just have they have gusto. They like they they want it. They responded all year too. They, have they not responded when, linked, when, not there, once. when there's been all a challenge year. in front of them. And they, this is the third responded. game, right? So they went mm -hmm. from November until the last three games of the season where they stopped playing players without losing three games in a row. Mm -hmm. This is a resilient group, and I think that they're ready to come out and punch. That doesn't mean they'll win, though. Mm -hmm. So, like, we talked about this before the series. That's what they did in game four, right? They, they exactly. responded and punched. and They could have the best game that they've ever had and somehow still lose yeah. because it's the Golden State Warriors. It's Steph Curry who can go for 50 at any time. Yep. So, you never know. These guys have not blinked all year long. I don't expect them to blink tonight. This is who they are. They're tougher than a $2 steak. Mike Brown always has these guys ready to play. They respond to Mike Brown, and they have leadership on the court at all times. And once again, doesn't guarantee they're going to win. I think they're going to win tonight, but none of that guarantees they're going to win, but they will be ready for tonight. I'm I wonder. Very confident. I wonder what the drinking games are with D'Lo and KC because it's got to be two dollars. Tougher than a two dollar steak is a that's a that's a that's a shot. I haven't yeah. heard that for a while. No, it's been oh, all week. Yeah, it's this has been heavy all week. It, oh. That's at least the third time today. <laughs> okay, at minimum the third time today. <laughs> okay, really since the Kings started dropping games, this, the, the two dollar <laughs> steak reference has come out. So yeah, that one's. <laughs> that one's been fast, and I'm 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 sure we've I'm sure I have several that are good for good. The for chatty a also let us know what the what David the J wants are. to know where is Kenny finding two dollar sticks. Las Vegas, Vegas he tell, he tells us Vegas. Las Vegas. We we just you try to make it clear Sky $4, River $4, Sky $4, River Casino eggs. does not serve two dollar no, steaks. No, no, you cannot no. get a two dollar nope. steak at uh, four dollar steak and eggs in Vegas at Bill's Wild Gambling Saloon at three a.m. That's funny. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> bigger game needed from domas or kevin herter start with you james say that one more time you need a bigger game tonight from domas or kevin herter if if if, if, if you said this guy had a we'll call it a breakout game bigger than what they've done breakout game four 
Domas or Kevin Herter, which one would you be more confident uh, would lead to a victory? Hmm. Um, I don't think Domas has had like horrible games. He so hasn't. I'm going to mm-hmm. say Herter because if you can get Herter going, spaces the floor, opens things up for other people. So, I mean, I think I think the Warriors are going to come out and try to be really physical with De'Aaron Fox early on mm. and try to push his buttons. That means <laughs> that other things are going to be open. We should probably be careful, too. Well, because we're talking about a breakout game. We got one from Keegan. Mm. We actually need two people to play really well. <laughs> we, we need two we of need, the three. We need you a second need guy. Yeah, we need a second guy. Well, in, well in the in the group of Harrison, Kevin, and Keegan. Yeah. To play really well. I mean, I don't put Sabonis in that. In yeah. That group, so. Yeah. So, so Sabonis yeah, and We need and Sabonis to play well. Thing. But two of, like you said, Harrison, Keegan, and Herter have to play well. Like, and, I need like 15 apiece from and two And truth of those be told, guys. it might have to be more than that because, I mean, I know we. I know we're all hyped for the, I believe someone coined it the finger game yesterday, well, which they've been, I don't, been floating I don't think we voted on that as the name, but <laughs> I mean, if De'Aaron has a night tonight, yeah. it's going to go down in Kings lore for a long time. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't and the Kings were to, to compete or the Kings were to win, like someone's going to have to make up for that. Mm-hmm. And just Kevin Herter having a night, Domas being good, that's not going to be enough. Now it's now we're talking Malik. Yeah. And we're talking Davion hitting the handful of shots that he gets. We're talking Harrison being uh, 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 efficient. Yeah. You know, we're, we're talking a, a lot more has to fall into place if if De'Aaron isn't going. And this is a crazy thing to say for a dude with a broken finger. It's, if he's not going for 32, mm. then his average, you know, need some guys to step up. Let me come out the woodworks here. Trey Lyles has a big game tonight. Ooh. Trey Lyles has a big game tonight. I'm Trey thinking, Lyles was I'm so massive. I'm thinking 15 to, 15 to 20 points tonight for Trey Lyles. Okay. I think the Kings can win without De'Aaron Fox putting up 30. I think they can win with him scoring 18 or 19 or 20 and having a bunch of guys step up. Yeah. Again, you talk about Trey Lyles. You, yeah. A couple of shots from Davion. Uh, Kevin Herter gets on a heater. Harrison Barnes He's goes to be the rim efficient. and hits, yeah. a couple of, hits a couple of threes. Domas looks more like Domas, you know, 20, 12, and, and 8. Like, if you get that and, and all of these other pieces kind of lock in, you should be fine. Just said something I wanted to take a peek at before we go. He had eight assists in the last game. Domas, Domas did. Because mm-hmm. oh, they finally hit their threes. Hit yeah. 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 I mean, that's what it came down to. Yeah, it was not the yeah, not the case before. Four, four, three. Hmm. Mm. Assists are two way street. Yeah. They were forty percent from three. 14 of 35. Warriors go, were 14 of 34. Let's go, man. I'm ready for this. So, baby, Kings win tonight, baby. Kings win tonight, baby. Let's go. Going back to the dental office up 3 2, baby. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we got 60 seconds left. Keep clapping. We need you to clap for 45 more seconds. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just looking like when Fox scores. <laughs> uh between 17 and 19 points the kings are like seven and three okay. like i wouldn't have thought that yeah, yeah so it's the complete opposite of the way it used to be <laughs> yeah. darren didn't go for 28 kings lost by 30 <laughs> seven yeah. and two when he scores between seven 17 and 19 points mm. okay we'll keep that in the back of your head we appreciate you so much uh for being with us if